So, guess what I got? That's right. I got a set of Posca markers. I have wanted these for a really long time. I was so excited. Ah! So this is a set of all the 3M size colors other than the glitter tips. I don't have the glitter pens. But I have all of the colors. It's 35 Posca markers. And uh, yeah. Came in this cute little case, which I am kind of obsessed with. And so the reason I wanted all 35, so I ordered, originally I ordered this set off of eBay, but it only included 32 markers. And there are actually 35 colors that are not glitter. So the reason that I wanted these originally was because I want to use these Posca markers for Huevember which is where you take a different color every day in November and you do art with it, primarily that color. So I decided that I was gonna do Huevember and I wanted to use Posca markers and there are 30 days in Huevember. However, there are, there's a black and a white and there are three metallics in this set. So, with the 32 set, I still was gonna be short three colors because I didn't wanna use the metallics. So I ordered the other three. The story is getting really long, I'm very sorry. So now I have all 35 colors so that when November rolls around, hopefully I will be able to do that challenge, use a different color every day, except for the three metallics and the black and white. But anyway, so I want to get acquainted with these markers because I have only, you may have seen, I've used them a few times bullet journaling and I've used the black and white ones mostly when I do art. I use them on my custom hydro flask that I made for my brother and they are the only ones I've ever had. So now I want to try making art with just Posca markers instead of using them as an accent for line art or for highlights at the end of the art. So that's my long-winded story about why I have these. I'm going to open these up and I have to activate them all and we're going to do some fun art. Okay, so to start off, I am, as you can see here, shaking each pen. And then, to open the plastic, you simply twist the top and barrel of the marker in opposite directions, which breaks the plastic, and so it can be easily removed off of the pen. Then, you pump the tip on a firm surface. In this case, I'm using the cardboard of my black paper sketchbook. And once the ink begins to flow, you can write with it. And here, I'm writing the color name and doing a little scribble as a swatch for each marker. On top of the 3M Posca pens, I also purchased a 1MR tip Posca pen in black in case I decided my art needed some line art since it has the finest tip available in Posca pens. As for what to do with these, I was a little at a loss because there is just so much you can do with them and as we've seen in the majority of my previous videos, I am pretty terrible at making decisions. However, I recently saw Casey Golden's video on using Posca markers to draw, or rather, draint, as Mariah Elizabeth calls it, on scrapbook paper using the patterns as inspiration for the images. Well, some of you may know that I make cards, and so I have purchased many large packs of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper so I have plenty of paper hanging around that I haven't used or don't plan on using for my cards. So I went to my stash and picked out a bunch of patterns that I thought were strange or interesting. I ended up with 32 sheets, which I numbered on the back. And then I went to a random number generator because again, decision making, not my forte, and got five numbers from one to 32. I ended up with 31, 12, 29, 6, and 5. 
So finding those sheets in my stack, these are what we are using for our video today. So I took these 12 by 12 mats that have an eight by eight opening cut in them and traced the center so I knew what field I had to work in and started drawing. Painting, drainting. For this first one, the plaid made me think of a rustic log cabin sort of aesthetic. So I decided that that's what I'd go with, the cabin. And since it was so nicely divided into four equal sections, I couldn't think of anything except the four seasons. So that's what I ended up doing. Of the five, this one took me the longest. It was basically four miniature drain tanks, and I was very glad that I had such fine points to work with, because using the 5M size markers, they feel like would have been really difficult because these images are so small. So, we have the spring cherry blossoms, summer greenery, autumn falling leaves, and then, of course, the frozen over winter. With a cute little snowman. I love him. <laughs> For the second one, I first thought of the texture of a sweater. That sort of knit yarn or fabric quality. However, the second thing it made me think of was grass, probably because of the color. So I decided to go with that instead because I got an idea for it first. Also, don't mind my camera. For some reason, it decided to incessantly zoom in slowly over time as I worked, and it drove me absolutely crazy. I have no idea why it was acting up. It was very strange. It was like a little ghost was adjusting my camera when I wasn't paying attention. Anyway. So my idea for this one was someone laying on their back looking up at the clouds. And then for some reason all I could think of was Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh. So that's actually what I ended up going with. I wanted to do some hand lettering as well. So I chose a quote from Winnie the Pooh. If you ever watched any of my bullet journal videos, you know I'm pretty obsessed with including quotes. So of course I couldn't resist that here. <laughs> There are so many good quotes I could have gone with from the Winnie the Pooh series, but I settled on, sometimes the smallest things take up the most room in your heart. After that came sheet three. And this one was a turquoise alligator or maybe lizard skin texture of some kind. So I decided to do a brightly colored lizard Maybe it's not too inventive and a little obvious, but I actually like how this one came out a lot. I filled in the entire background with a sandy color because I figured this could be some sort of lizard in the desert. I don't really know. I just wanted the background to be an obviously different color from the foreground of the actual lizard. And that sandy color, which is the beige Posca pen, by the way, made for a nice contrast. After I had the first layer colored down, I tried to pump the beige out onto a palette you'll see to use with a brush to paint over the background and take out some of the lines. I've seen Casey Golden do it a million times but I just could not get any paint out of this thing. Even after I gave up pumping the nib to get excess paint, and I actually took the nib out and tried to pour out some ink. No idea what I was doing wrong, but either way, that didn't work out. I actually ended up liking the textured background anyway. It was just really annoying that I couldn't figure out how to spill out some ink and use a brush, because I know that's a viable technique with Posca pens. The fourth one was interesting. It's clearly what a troublemaking child is supposed to be writing on a chalkboard that they did wrong. So I decided to draw the troublemaking child. <laughs> I decided also to pay some homage to Casey Golden since she is the one who inspired my first Posca pen video. I tried to create something in a similar style to her simple illustrative cartoonish way. 
I used her eye and nose style and tried to keep things blocky and simple. I've noticed that that sort of solid, cell-shaded, divided style seems to work the best for images made with Posca pens. And you'll notice that I left an empty space to one side. We have another opportunity for hand lettering. I know, it's a little weird to put words on top of words, but it also sort of fits, I thought. Anyway, I thought of this quote that I've heard before and I couldn't help using it. It just wouldn't get out of my head. It's a super bad pun and makes me laugh really hard. <laughs> Not everyone gets a chance to write their wrongs. <laughs> I'm so cool. Yeah. Anyway, then I decided that there needed to be a bit more color and I needed to fill up that sort of right hand upper side of the picture. So I ended up adding these random paint splotches all over the place to fill in the space a little better. As if there had been some sort of paint throwing fight maybe and that's why she's in trouble right now. Though she's a little scamp, you can tell by her messy clothes and the dirt on her face and the slingshot in her back pocket. Uh, this is definitely not her first rodeo with being in trouble. <laughs> Lastly, we have this gray textured paper and it took me a while to decide what orientation I wanted the lines to be going in and what I was going to do. Eventually, after turning it around a few times and looking at it and staring at it and thinking, I settled on this direction with the lines going vertically because it made me think of the wood texture that those wood and wire fences you often see on beaches have. That sort of weathered gray wood with the twisted wire that goes between them. So this scene's gonna be a beach. And on this one, I definitely was practicing making gradients. I made a quote unquote gradient in the water and in the sky by coloring solid sections with the markers in different colors, and then drawing lines in the adjacent blocks of colors to break them up and make it look like the color was fading back and forth throughout. This one is probably my favorite piece, though I do like how all of them turned out. However, by the time I got to this fifth one, I felt much more comfortable working with the Posca pens, and I think that helped a lot. Okay, so here are my finished Posca pieces. We have the Four Seasons, Winnie the Pooh, this lizard gecko-y thingy, <laughs> this naughty girl who had to write things on the chalkboard that she wasn't going to do anymore, and this beach scene. They're all pretty different. They're all kind of out there. And there goes Posca Pen. Uh, thoughts, ideas, uh, impressions. Uh, these definitely do tear up the paper, as people have warned me they would. So, not really a surprise, because I knew it was coming. But, also, I tried, you will have noticed in the gecko picture, I tried to go in with the pasta ink. I tried to pump it out of the pen and use a brush and I don't know if I was just doing it wrong or not figuring it out or what but I had no luck with that. So I definitely need to I don't know figure that out. <laughs> uh, but yeah these were a really interesting experience. I really like them. Um, I learned not to layer them too much and blocky, cartoony pieces of art seem to work the best. Uh, and if you are wondering why these are all packaged up nicely in plastic, it's because I'm going to put these five pieces of art up on Etsy. So if you are interested in any of these, they are 12 by 12 because that's what size scrapbook paper is and I will make them available. Uh, if they're not up now, they will be soon. <laughs> but yeah, so check that out if you're interested. Um, and otherwise, yeah, I'm gonna 
try different applications for Posca pens. They were really, I was really impressed with how well they covered not only the scrapbook paper, but themselves. I could go over any color with any color and it was opaque. I was, I was losing it. It was crazy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe for more creative content. Let me know if you want me to use Posca pens more often now that I have a set. I am now considering getting um, the 5M size in all the colors because I do like filling in the broader area areas more uh, more quickly with those because I do have a couple of 5M Poscas as you would have seen in some older videos. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you like Posca pens? Do you not like Posca pens? Should I not use these anymore? Do I suck at it? I mean, that's up for debate. Maybe don't tell me that. I'll be sad. But yeah, uh, I guess until next time, I will talk to all of you soon. Bye.